Welcome to the Cross Point Southern Baptist Church Weekly Bible Study. Thank you for joining us again. I'm your host, Jim Hillier. Cross Point has been serving our shut in and vacationing members for over three years by live streaming our Sunday morning services on YouTube. And now it's our pleasure to also be offering an online Bible study every Sunday morning. Uh, if you're interested in getting a copy of the material that we use, we use the same material online as we have in our uh, in-person Sunday school classes. That material is uh, by a company called Lifeway. It's Explore the Bible. Uh, it comes in a, uh, a magazine style uh, series. Uh, it's published every quarter in a, a, small, uh, a small magazine format. And it covers a book of the Bible, sometimes two if they're smaller books, uh, across a three-month period. And each, each week there's uh, an in-depth uh, study of, uh, of several of the verses uh, written by uh, the producers of, uh, of the material. Uh, if you want to get a copy of this, either uh, have a uh, the, the small uh, magazine copy sent to you or uh, get it uh, in a digital format, just go to www.lifeway.com slash explore the Bible. And again, it's available in uh, uh, several different uh, uh, different uh, translations. There's a, a CSB, which is what we, we are currently using. Uh, it's also available, uh, some of the material is available also in the New King James, the New International Version, and the King James. Uh, and uh, they were recently starting to release uh, some of the material in the ESV uh, translation. So whatever translation you're, uh, you're comfortable with and most familiar with, you can probably find one uh, that's going to work for you. Uh, one of the things that I particularly like about this series is that in the front of each of these magazines, uh, there's a daily Bible reading plan that walks you through all of the scriptures, not just what's covered in the weekly uh, sessions, but verse by verse all the way through uh, the book or books that are being covered. Uh, this time we're, we're actually covering um, the, uh, the books of Proverbs and, uh, uh, and uh, Song of Solomon or Song of Songs. And so running down to, um, oh, to about here on this page, uh, the first two columns and, and about halfway down this column was Proverbs. And then because Song of Songs is very short, uh, it, it's just this last little section down here. Uh, this will be the last week that we are in this particular material. Uh, beginning next week, uh, we, we open up our, our next uh, session. Uh, this week we are in uh, session 13 of our 2020 uh, summer series, looking at, as I said, the, uh, uh, the books of Proverbs and Song of Songs. And next week we will uh, introduce the fall series, uh, where we'll be looking at the book of Isaiah from the Old Testament. Uh, this week we're looking at Song of Songs, chapter 5, verses uh, 6 through 16. Uh, I hope that uh, if you if you have the material that you'll open it up with us, and uh, if you if you if you don't, uh, I would at least hope that you've got your Bible there with you, and that you are uh, uh, that you're ready to uh, to dive into God's Word with us this morning. So, if you would join me in prayer, and we will get started in our class. Heavenly Father, we've come to you. Today, we thank you for the blessing of your word, uh, both the Old Testament and the New Testament. Father, just uh, the way that your word speaks to us, we, we thank you also for uh, the blessing of being able to share your word uh, out through the auspices of the internet. Uh, Lord, we know that, that since we can't be together uh, effectively right now uh, in our in our classrooms, that uh, uh, we we at least have this means of of getting the word out, 
And Father, we, we pray that you, would, that you would bless your word. We know that your word does not return void. So uh, someone out there somewhere is, is uh, going to be listening to this and, and I'm sure uh, that they, they are going to be blessed. They are going to get something from this, uh, this message, uh, from your word. Father, we, we come to you uh, just as, uh, as your children trying to learn from from what you share with us father we also ask that, that you would bless uh, conversations and decisions that uh, that various churches around the, the uh, their nation are making uh, as far as reopening uh, reopening their sanctuaries reopening their Sunday school classes reopening their their various uh, various Bible study classes and we pray that you would you would bless those decisions we pray that, that you would uh, you would bless this ministry of uh, of sharing your word through the internet so father as we get into your word this morning please bless us open our hearts and minds and our ears that uh, you would remove the distractions and we would all be able to learn something from your word for it's in your son's name we pray amen so this morning uh, as i said we are uh, uh, we are looking at uh, the final uh, the 13th uh, session in our uh, summer 2020 uh, material uh, this one is for uh, the 30th of august uh, 2020 looking at relational investments from the Song of Songs, uh, also known in some translations as the Song of Solomon. We'll be looking at chapter five, verses six through 16. This is a, it's a rather short lesson this morning, but it's also, it's also full of, uh, of a lot of information and a lot of insight and a lot of sharing. So opening up, you know, uh, when we're young, uh, we, we, we tend to invest in, in uh, uh, things like diplomas and uh, uh, careers, and cars, motorcycles, uh, as we get a little bit older, homes. Um, and then, you know, as we, as we age, uh, you know, we start looking at fitness, membership, fitness center memberships and uh, golf clubs. And, uh, and then eventually uh, we're, we're looking at uh, financial investments and retirement plans and uh, mutual funds or whatever. And our, as our needs change across time and, and sort of our perspective on what matters the most, you know, whether we're young or old, however, um, you know, if we're, we're wise, uh, when we see the value of investing in our relationships, uh, beginning with our relationship with God, you know, we, we've talked about our, uh, we talked about recently with uh, relationships uh, in the marriage and uh, the focus of Song of Songs has been uh, uh, basically a love song between Solomon and uh, uh, shepherdess that uh, that that, that uh, he was in love with and and again and her uh, responding back to him but we want to we want to think about as we as we go through this how our investments uh, show what stage we are in life and and what do our investments and what do we invest in uh, I mean, well, right, right now, if you think about it, you're investing, uh, you're investing time. You're investing time in, uh, in watching this lesson and, and learning from, uh, from the Word of God. So uh, it, it's very important to, to look at what we focus on and what we, in, because what we invest in, that's what's important to us. So right now, obviously, if you're, if you're watching and you're continuing to watch this, um, the, uh, there, there's an importance right now to you investing time in God's word and learning. Uh, throughout uh, you know, the, the, the various chapters of Song of Songs, uh, it brings to mind God's directive about marriage and uh, in which he declared that, that the two, the husband and the wife would become one as back in Genesis uh, uh, chapter two, verse 24. 
the man and the woman in the poem uh, get married and uh, and now they're learning uh, how how to live as one as they grow in their relationship. Uh, the man put his wife in a chariot one day early on in uh, in in uh, the in the book. Uh, he puts his puts his wife in the chariot and, and takes her for everyone to see. And then again toward the end, he 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 does that again and uh, to make sure that everyone knows that that she is his spouse. And he and he shows pride in her. And if, and then toward the end of the poem, uh, the man and the woman woman when they appear together, uh, she she leans on him. Uh, as they made their way into into his city, uh, and I say his city because he 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 was the king, um, and you know she talked with him about her desire for him to, to keep her in, uh, for him to to keep her in his heart. Uh, then she describes the resilience of their love and uh, and and what that looks like. Some readers of Song of Songs uh, might ask why Solomon was so expressive about God's gift of sexual intimacy. Well, Solomon wanted to, to reclaim the truth about that kind of relationship. He wanted to, he wanted to, to stress the fact of the sexual expression and intimacy between a husband and wife is a, is a gift from God. It's not, it's not something created by Satan. It's not something created by man. It's not something, uh, something dirty and earthly. It's, it, it, is, it is the gift of God when it's between a husband and wife. You know, God's people need to know that the ultimate goal of that kind of intif infamous intimacy, I'm having a hard time speaking this morning. Oh, that'll make it better. But rather, the ultimate goal is to build a true and lasting relationship that brings glory to God and leads to family and, and, and human flourishing. So as we, as we look through these, uh, these 10 verses today, we want to uh, kind of take note of the, the emotions that are expressed and, and what these emotions reveal uh, and, uh, and about how we can foster that in a relationship. Excuse me. So, starting out in uh, chapter 5, verses 6 through 8, we have a cry for companionship. Uh, starting in verse 6, I opened to my love, but my love had turned and gone away. My heart sank because he had left. I sought him, but did not find him. I called him, but he did not answer. The guards who go about the city found me. They beat and wounded me. They took my cloak from me, the guardians of the walls. Young women of Israel, I charge you, if you find my love, tell him that I am lovesick. So what, we, what we've got here is you know, the bride arises and, and opens the door for her husband to enter and just to find that, that, that he's not there. Uh, it kind of paints a tragic uh, picture, doesn't it, the, of a bride seeking her husband and, and, and he's, he's nowhere to be found. It, uh, it describes the longing of, of this woman for the partnership and companionship of her husband. Solomon uses some kind of vivid terms here to address uh, the hurt and harm that uh, this bride is experiencing by her, her husband's absence. Uh, when he says that, that he had turned and gone away, her heart sank. He did not answer. It, 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 Think about how, how tragic that is in the, uh, when a husband neglects the call uh, to meet the needs of his wife and, and how equally sad is it when a wife fails to, to meet the needs of her husband. Uh, you know, let's, let's think for a second about, about how the failure of, of one spouse to meet the emotional needs of the other leads to greater issues. And if you, th if you think about it for a minute, if, if we aren't getting the emotional uh, support the uh, uh, the psychological support uh, the, uh, the at home. People tend to seek it elsewhere. If they're not getting if they're not getting that affection at home, 
they're going to seek it elsewhere. If, uh, and 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 we'll we'll expand it a little bit further here. Um, in that uh, you know, that if kids aren't feeling loved at home, if they're not feeling appreciated if, at home, if they're feeling if they're just they're just kind of there, and and uh, and sometimes they're they're just kind of in the way. Uh, that the sensation that they get is that, that they are in the way. Um, you know, they're. If they're not getting that attention and that affection at home, they're going to find it somewhere. They're going to find it uh, on the internet, which can be extremely dangerous. Uh, it's stranger danger. Uh, uh, we the other day there was uh, uh, just a constant uh, barrage of of, of uh, amber alerts uh, here locally um, you know, over a, a child that was abducted, and. You know, if children aren't aren't getting that that kind of of emotional and psychological love and support at home, they will find it somewhere. As will parents, as will husband and wife. If they're, uh, if a husband isn't getting, uh, isn't feeling appreciated at home, he's going to go hang out at the bar. He's going to go hang. Uh, he may be hanging with his buddies. He may be hanging, uh, just hanging out at the bar. He may he may find another female that. Uh, uh, that, that, that seems to be uh, lavishing attention on him. And he's gonna, go, he's gonna go find that attention that he's not getting. Wives do it too. Uh, you know, the wives, uh, we, we, we hear, hear all the time about uh, spouses that are, that are unfaithful. And well, why are they unfaithful? Why? And I know this is gonna probably upset some people, but why? was if, if you were in a relationship and your spouse was unfaithful, I have to ask why. Why was that spouse unfaithful? What weren't they getting at home that they sought and found somewhere else? It usually, sometimes it's physical, but in general, it's not just physical. It's emotional, it's psychological, and it can also be physical. So if in that situation where one spouse is, is unfaithful, you know, the Bible says we, you know, the, 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 that uh, divorce is, is acceptable if, if it's because of infidelity, but I would challenge you to look long and hard before you go down that road. I would, I would challenge you to look long and hard at what exactly was the, the driver behind that infidelity. Was it solely the other person or were you culpable as well? And I know, I'm sorry, but that's a, that's a, hard, that's a hard question to ask. But uh, it's something that, you know, I, all I share is God's word. And it's just not everything that, that necessarily comes out of this book, but it does come out of God's word. So as, as we look at this and says, well, what happens when, when this, uh, this new bride couldn't find her husband? Well, uh, unmet needs and desires in a marriage, uh, like I said, you know, ends in tragedy. Uh, the bride seeking, uh, seeking her husband was met with abuse. Uh, uh, the way it's described here on the surface, it's, it's physical abuse. Uh, the, uh, you know, it's been, uh, it, Five seven has been viewed by some as a, a reference to, to physical abuse, maybe even rape. Uh, and you know, it says, as the city guards beat and wounded her and took her cloak from her. Uh, now, there's never an excuse for any any form of abuse and uh, uh, any form of, of other kinds of abuse, uh, whether it's uh, um, you know, again, physical, emotional. Uh, uh, psychological, sexual, none of those types of abuse can, can ever be overlooked. And even if it's abuse inside, inside the household. So having said that, this, the, this episode kind of describes in these verses uh, what could possibly affect, uh, if reflect a dream. Uh, some uh, some scholars look at this and say that uh, uh, you know because earlier she had talked about a dream that, that maybe this also was a dream and the description of what happened uh, you know it, it really kind of strongly gives the impression that it could have been a, a dream or it could have actually happened uh, but in reality if you think about it she was married to Solomon the king, the king of Israel 
Uh, for that very reason, uh, she likely would not have been mistreated by the guards. Uh, you know, they were they were literally putting their lives on the line. Uh, but again, in, in a, if it wasn't a dream, uh, you know, she was she was dealing subconsciously and in a, in a dream state of uh, you know, what she was feeling inside and in her and her fears. So now, if we move on. To verse eight, we have a call for remembering. Uh, <clears throat> whoops, excuse me. Let me move back there to. Uh, it says, "Young woman, uh, young women of Jerusalem, I charge you, uh, if you find my love, tell them that I'm that I'm heart sick, that I'm love sick." Uh, she's so desperate and she's she's challenging the the uh, the other young women of Jerusalem to to, to help her find their, her lover in uh, six times in this chapter the woman refers to her husband as her love uh, he was the centerpiece of her life and nothing nothing or nobody could compare to him uh, she'd given herself completely to him and her deep affection for him uh, wasn't about to disintegrate she was literally lovesick and heartsick. You know, marriages get into trouble when uh, uh, when spouses are distant or uh, distant emotionally, and and uh, even though they're they're present physically. So how might a, how do you think a, a person's search for companionship? Uh, uh, how you might think you might compare that to a person's search for uh, for for God and and for meaning? Uh, you know, it's. I would say that it's precisely the same. Uh, scripture says that that, that uh, in Romans uh, three eleven, uh, quoting uh, quoting back to Psalms, uh, says that no one searches for God, but but we do search for uh, for meaning. We search for purpose. We search for goals. We search for why am I here? You know, we, we may not be specifically searching for God, but we often are searching for a God in our life. It's something, something to, 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 uh, to guide us and guard us and represent. Uh, you know, we don't necessarily seek him, but we seek. And when, and when we hear the word, that is the, answer, the beginning of the answer to what we are seeking. You know, David, uh, again, in, back in Psalms uh, 14 and, and 53, David describes the, uh, the corruption of the natural man. And that's what, that's what Paul was referring back to in, uh, in that verse from Romans, um, in Romans, Romans 3.11, uh, that, that none seeks for God. Uh, we'll get into the, at, at another time. We can get into the uh, the a discourse on uh, um, on uh, proper exegesis and uh, uh, understanding the uh, the the culture uh, of the original audience, the culture that that, that uh, Paul was writing to, and why he was writing what he was. But overall, we do seek. We just don't know what we're looking for, and then and. And then you you see uh, you see a, an internet uh, an internet uh, program like this, or uh, uh, or you, you see an internet uh, presentation of uh, of the gospel, or you you sit in church and you you hear a, a good uh, uh, expository preacher, and and the word starts to open up, and the, and the Holy Spirit starts to touch your heart, and that's where you find those answers. But in that 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 level of seeking until we find, until we start to start to find we can be literally lovesick for, for God and not even know why, not even know, have a clue as to, as to what is it that's missing from our lives until we hear the word. So moving on to verse nine, what makes the one you love better than another? Most beautiful of women. What makes him better than another that you would give us this charge? So this this is uh, the the response of the uh, the 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 young uh, uh, the young ladies, uh, her contemporaries, uh, saying saying you know well what makes him so special? What why is he so why is he so wonderful? What's so good about him? 
And uh, you know, the young these young women's response actually uh, it kind of challenges her to uh, uh, to to think back and says, uh, uh, you know, what was it that she was? Why was she so attracted to him in the first place? Why did she choose her husband over all the other young men in town? What made him stand out? What what caused her to love him above all others? And these kind of questions uh, led her to charge the women of the city to inform her absentee husband that uh, that, that she was that she was still uh, that she was still lovesick over him. You know, there's this little thing that uh, called uh, uh, re relational amnesia that can impact a marriage. Um, you know, there's, there's numerous reasons that a husband and wife uh, have for entering into a marriage covenant. And, um, and, and over time, sometimes we can forget those. Uh, you know, I mean, we have, uh, work and kids and uh, houses and yards and property and, and uh, you know, all of these things that get in the way. Uh, all of these things that come between a husband and wife. Um, and they, and, you know, and they kind of, it starts becoming mundane and it's just the, the same thing over and over and over. And it's, uh, it, it, the relationship becomes stagnant and boring. And, and sometimes we, we need, we need somebody to come to us and say, what makes the one that you love better than another? What, what makes your wife the best wife there is? Guys, think about that. Sit down and think about that and just and ask right down on a, right on a piece of paper, why is my wife special? And then think back at the same time what that list looked like when you first got together. Wives do do the same thing with your husbands. What makes him so special? Why did I why did I and, 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 and this is gonna Kind of sound like a weird question, but why in the world did I marry this guy? But don't take it as that that flippant. Oh my! Why did I? Why did I ever marry this guy? Instead, really think about it. What drove that? Was it just uh, you? You just kind of fell together. You felt like everything was was right. Maybe maybe they made you smile all the time. Maybe they made you laugh a lot. Maybe uh, you just you shared a lot of a lot of things in common. What what was it that 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 made that spouse the one, the one and only for you? And hopefully, when you start looking at it from that perspective, hopefully you're gonna you're gonna see that um, oh. That's what it was. And you'll still find that something in that spouse. You know, there, there's, uh, you know, we, we have to ask ourselves, you know, what, uh, what is the, what's the, the, uh, the value in retelling stories over and over and over uh, at, at holidays? You know, we, uh, we all do it. We sit around. We sit around the dining room table at Thanksgiving, and uh, and we're, we tell we tell the same stories that we've told for the last twenty years. Uh, you know, I know uh, here in in our family, uh, uh, you know, I've known I've known my uh, my wife's brother since uh, since we were like uh, I don't know fifth or sixth grade, it was a long time ago, and and we to this day we tell we tell those stories. You know, there there was a song, a secular song, a few years. Quite a few years ago, you know, glory days. You know, we, we tell the stories of the glory days. Why why is it important to tell the stories of the glory days? Not it, it it's not so much it could be, but it's not so much to brag about what we were, about how great we once were, but it's to remember how great a relationship was. When you, you start telling a story about a, a vacation that, uh, that, that that you and your spouse took. Uh, 25 years ago and 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 what you did and the the experiences and the things that you saw and you start sharing that and you, you find yourself kind of looking at each other saying yeah that was a good time it was a good time when we tell those stories though we also sometimes we remember the bad times you know sometimes those the stories that we tell are, are are not are not of necessarily the happiest times in our lives but of sad times but what comes out of those stories is why and how did we get through 
that event. So sometimes a sad story will, 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 will drive us to praise God because, you know, some of us have some, have some very sad stories in our lives, but, but we turn around and we praise God because of God got us through it. And, or God gave us a spouse that helped us get through it. So it's all of those things come together. So the, the storytelling, the, the sharing is, 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 is important. You know, it's something that we have to do. So moving to the next verse, or verses, this is uh, verses 10 through 16. It says, my love is fit and strong, notable among 10,000. His head is pure as gold. His hair is wavy and black as a raven. His eyes are like doves beside flowing streams, washed in milk and set like jewels. His cheeks are like beds of spice, mounds of perfume. His lips are lilies dripping with flowing, with flowing myrrh. <coughs> Excuse me. His arms are rods of gold set with barrel. His body is an ivory panel covered with lapis lazuli. His legs are alabaster pillars set on pedestals of pure gold. His, his presence is like Lebanon, his majest, as majestic as the cedars. His mouth is sweetness. He's absolutely desirable. This is my love and this is my friend, young women of Jerusalem. <clears throat> well, she answered their question, I think. He started at, she started at the top of his head and went to the soles of his feet and then, and then, uh, and then bounced back up to his lips. Um, I, think, I, think she, I think she covered it all. But the, she, she recounts it, the, the, uh, the admirable characteristics of the husband. And, and in so doing, she, uh, uh, she re reaffirms her love for him. That's why I was saying about those stories and, and thinking about the, you know, why, why is my spouse the one? And you, you, you start looking and she's looking at all of these, these, uh, the, these physical attributes. Because uh, uh, we're human and, and we, we look at physical attributes. Uh, there's, there's actually three themes of encouragement that, that come out of this uh, section of verses. First of all, the bride complimented her husband's physical attributes. Uh, the compliments of the bride, and, you know, she uh, compliments his strength, his hair, his eyes, his face and lips, his arms and body, his physique, uh, even his physical presence, just that, that he's there. And... Uh, and, and he's notable, and he's noted. And then, uh, f and finally, uh, the, the, the sweetness of his kisses. And you know, as, there, as the old saying goes, I, the, uh, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And uh, what one con person considers beautiful or handsome, another may not. But what's important is to reaffirm each other with those words. Uh, you know, tell your spouse that they look nice. Tell your spouse that they're pretty. Tell your spouse that they're that uh, that, that that they're the uh, that they're still the apple of your eye. That they, they, they are they're still your world. Uh, they we all need to hear that. And second, the second piece that comes out of, out of this, and uh, I would I would challenge that this is actually the the strongest the most important of all of this, because, you know, beauty, beauty goes away, folks. The, 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 uh, the, the 20 year old, the 21 year old uh, uh, girl that, that's just a raven, ravishing beauty. And uh, when she's 75, she may not look so good. Gravity takes its toll, guys. <laughs> And, and fellas, you may be you may be the uh, the, the the high school hunk, the uh, uh, the football star. You may be the uh, the the uh, the weightlifting champion. You may be, but guys, age takes its toll. Gravity takes its toll. You start getting you start getting mm -hmm, you start you know, eating a little bit too much and. It 
by the time by the time you're in your 60s you quite probably uh, there's a small percentage of guys out there that uh, you know that they're 70 years old and they're still running marathons and they're still lifting weights and they're still doing this that and the other thing that's a very very small percentage of guys most of us when we get older we're not as good as we once were yeah there's a country song about that somewhere uh, you know, may not be as good as I as I once was but I'm as good once as I ever was that you may be you may be able to pull off that uh, that, that that feat of strength when it uh, when it comes to you know you, you got to get things done and there's and there's that adrenaline and you got to do this but on a daily basis yeah you, you might not so we need that we need something beyond the physical and this is where this is where this piece comes in in verse 16 he is absolutely desirable this is my love and this is my friend that's the important one your spouse folks your spouse better be your best friend if I was to come to you at any given point in time and ask you the name of your best friend, you better give me the name of your spouse or there's something wrong in your relationship. And, you know, there's an old, uh, there's an old saying that, uh, you know, you gotta, about, uh, you know, sticking with your, sticking with your guys and sticking with your buddies and uh, over, over the women. And the, no, that's not true. Your best friend needs to be your spouse. Because your spouse is the one that should know everything about you. They should know you better than, your, than you know yourself. They should know, they should, they, they, should, they should know all of the tiny details. And they should love you anyway. And you should love them anyway. You know, you know everything that is, that, that's the matter with your spouse. But you love them anyway. And if you're doing that, you don't have to worry about all that other stuff. You don't have to worry about the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the spouse uh, uh, going looking for that attention somewhere else. And then, you know, and thirdly, uh, you know, she's, uh, she's supporting and supportive of, uh, of the husband. And, uh, and she says, you know, this is, ladies, this is who he is. You know, a, a successful marriage encompasses the... the Intimacy, fidelity, that emotional connection, and uh, the kind of marriage that, that Solomon portrays in the Song of Songs is a, a precursor of the, the kind of marriage described in Ephesians 5, 22 and 23, where Paul explains that husbands are to love and lead their spouses as Christ loves and leads the church. And wives are to love and follow their husbands in fulfilling the image of what it means to be in Jesus Christ. Uh, intentionally celebrating uh, each other in marriage is a, a critical part of, uh, of marriage and neglecting. Uh, neglected marriages are rarely, very rarely successful. Uh, as is one dimensional relationship. You know, they, they can't survive. Uh, if a relationship is based solely on physical uh, or sexual alone, uh, the emotional support needed for for it is is could be absent, and and if it is, they're going that person is going to go look for something else in their life, and and they're going to look for meaning and support elsewhere. But again, the the key here is that uh, we are we have to we have to hold on to each other. We have to respect each other. So kind of in a, in a, in a closing uh, few points of, of context here is you know, that godly marriages should be characterized by mutual moral and emotional support. And that godly marriages are formed on a commitment to remain faithful to each other throughout their lives, no matter what comes. You know, there's a, there, there's a line and that is, is part of uh, most, uh, uh, it, it, it's actually part of most uh, uh, marriage ceremonies that says, till death do us part. And that doesn't mean 
the death of your relationship or the death of your uh, the, 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 the death of your, uh, your desire. It means throughout your entire life. And last of all, godly marriages need to include a mutual affirmation of one's spouse. Do your friends know how great your spouse is? Do your, do your co-workers know how great your spouse is? Trust me, in the, the case of this uh, the Shulamite woman that, that uh, became Solomon's wife, all of her girlfriends knew how wonderful he was. So think about that. I hope, uh, I hope you'll join us again next week as we, uh, as we go into uh, uh, the, uh, the beginning of uh, uh, the, the book of Isaiah from the Old Testament. That should be a very interesting, uh, very interesting study. Isaiah was a, a great book. There's a lot of good material there. Uh, so again, I, I hope that you'll join us and I hope that you'll, uh, you'll join me in, as, uh, as we close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you and thank you for the time that we've spent in your word. We pray that you, uh, or that something from your word has, has blessed, and strengthened a relationship, a marriage. Uh, Father, we just, we just pray that you've, you've, uh, as you always do, and as your word always does, that you've, you've blessed the hearers. Uh, we pray that you would be with us as we get into uh, uh, the book of Isaiah uh, in the coming weeks that you would bless us and bring us back together. For it's in your son's name we pray.